begin today's program. Of my request, Dr. Naresh Palewansa, the President of ISA Amdavati, to escort our Chief Guest for today, Honorable Dean Dr. A.T. Deshmukh sir, to the dais and take their seats. I now request uh, Dr. Sunil Ravai sir, HOD of uh, Department of Anesthesiology, to escort our Honorable Director, Dr. Priya uh, Sambhanshri sir, to the dais and take their seats. I request Dr. Tanaji sir, GC member Maharashtra State Chapter Anesthesia, to escort our first speaker guest, Dr. Rajesh sir, to the dais and take their seats. Uh, our second speaker guest today. We shall now proceed with lap lightning ceremony. Now I request our respected dignitaries to come and light the lamp. to welcome our chief guest, Dr. A.T. Deshmukh sir, with a floral bouquet. I request Dr. Sunil Lavai sir, to welcome our chief guest, Dr. Diya Somanshi sir, with a floral bouquet. with a floral book. I request Dr. Amol Dakulka sir to welcome Dr. Tarun Makela sir with a floral book. I request Dr. Kundar sir to welcome Dr. Naresh Akrawal sir with a floral bouquet. I 
request Patil ma'am to welcome Tanaji sir with a floral bouquet. I request Sirish Bahure sir to welcome Dr. Amol Dhakulkar sir with a floral bouquet. I request Dr. Sunil Lavare sir to come and take uh, the podium for the introductory speech. Hello. Going down to the goddess of goddess Saraswati and remembering visionary Dr. Punjab Rao Deshmukh, I wish a very good morning to all of you. The dignitaries on the dais. President of the Amaravati Society of Anesthesiologists, Dr. Naresh Paliwa, today's chief guest, Honorable Dean of the Dr. Punjab Rao Deshmukh Memorial Medical College, Dr. H. Deshmukh sir, observer from the Maharashtra Medical Council and Honorary Director of the Dr. Punjab Rao Deshmukh Medical College, Dr. P. R. Somoshi sir, Governing Council Member of the Maharashtra Chapter of ISA Maharashtra, Dr. Tanaji Arda, today's faculty, we have arrived all the way from Gujarat, Dr. Rajesh Shah and Dr. Tarun Vagela, Secretary of the Amrauti Society of the Anesthesiologist, Dr. Amol Dhakrutas, Dignitaries of the Diet, Head of the Department of the uh, Orthopedics, Dr. Punkar Sir, Staff of the department, delegates, members of the Amrati Society of the Anesthesiologists and members of the Department of Anesthesiology. On behalf of the Department of Anesthesiology, Dr. Punjab Rao Deshmukh Medical College, Amrati, and Amrati Society of Anesthesiologists, I welcome you all this for this live workshop and CME on spinal anesthesia. Can it be different? Friends, since years together we are practicing regional anesthesia. First the spinal, that is subarachnoid, then umbilical. Later on various other regional blocks came, came into practice. And with them came the use of newer drugs. Coming towards today's workshop, the main attraction of the today's workshop is newer modalities of spinal anesthesia, that is segmental spinal and continuous spinal anesthesia. Along with the use of isobaric and hypobaric drugs in spinal anesthesia. Let me tell you a little bit about the background of the today's event. Dr. Naresh Paliwal came across this certain publication in the British Journal of Anesthesiology, which was of 2006. In the year 2010, he noticed this uh, publication. This publication was about the segmental anesthesia by Dr. Van Tender from University of Queensland, Australia, whom we all know as the pioneer of the segmental anesthesia. Dr. Paliwal was very much impressed by this work and started practicing segmental anesthesia. Here also in college, we start, he started practicing uh, segmental anesthesia. At that time, there were no Indian references and very few references from the foreign authors. Also, there were a few unresolved ethical problems. In 2011, Dr. Paliwal first presented this modality for the first time in the Amrauti Society of Anesthesiology. He started his cases in many WhatsApp groups of the anesthesiologist and also on the social media. As expected, there were controversies initially, but later practitioners came in came to know that it is one of the safe modality of anesthesia. Since then, he was called in for presentations in state, national and international forums. In last two years, he delivered about 26 presentations in India both online and offline. Just two months back, he presented, he presented himself in live, work, live workshop in Gujarat. Dr. Vakela and Dr. Chavar also there. Friends, 
I must not hesitate to say that he is the pioneer of this segmental aspinal in India. We are practicing these techniques in our college. Over a thousand cases have been operated under segmental anesthesia in our institute successfully. At a point of time, it so happened that the drug that is Zivo Vipivacan was used only in Amravati district and not uh, in any other part of the country. The company had to, decided to stop this uh, production of this, this drug. But this production and have and stopped, he was stopped it, the marketing of this drug. We had to request the company to continue to supply this drug. With the changing time, Yoga and Segmental Anesthesia have gained popularity amongst many fellow practicing anesthesiologists. All postgraduate students also have passed, which have passed out from here are using the technique at their places out of Maharashtra also. To be honest, we have we had planned this workshop in 2019 20 itself. But due to the unfortunate pandemic, we could not uh, go forward with it. Friends, today we have with us two more stalwarts in this field, Dr. Rajesh Shah from Surat and Dr. Tarun Vagela from Nausari. They have done excellent work in this field and are here with us to share their knowledge of the subject. So I assure you that today's workshop and CME will enrich you about the new, safe and simple and also cost-effective modality of spinal anesthesia, even in high-risk patients. And your Sunday will be worthy. Thank you. I would like to call upon our Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. A.K. Deshmukh, sir, for an oral speech. Good morning. At the outset, I would like to pay my obeisance to late Dr. Panjabra Deshmukh, because of whose vision we have all gathered over here. My friend and colleague, Director of Dr. Pidian Medical College, Dr. P. R. Somanshi, the President, Amrauti Chapter ISA, Dr. Naresh Paliwal, Secretary, Dr. Dhapulgar, Tanaji Arda, all the faculties who have come from far off, Dr. Shah and Dr. Vagila, sorry, I, I couldn't remember the name. Though I shouldn't be doing this because Gujarati Sattar of Chayavaya Abhi. Our own speaker, Dr. Naresh Paliwal, HOD of uh, Anastasia, Dr. Sunil Lavare, HOD Orthopedics, Dr. Ganesh Punkar, all the faculties from anesthesia and all anesthesiologists of Amravati district, I hope. A warm welcome to all of you in the presence of uh, the PDM Medical College Amravati. It's an honor and privilege to, uh, to have all of you here for this CME and workshop. I've been, I mean, <coughs> right from the day I took charge, it has been my opinion that uh, just as they do in Tata Memorial, CMEs are started by just lighting the lamp. There is no inaugural function. But uh, because it's uh, wasting time, precious time of yours, which you can dedicate more to your workshop and your seminars. But uh, following the tradition, I think we are still continuing with it. Friends, uh, it won't be appropriate to talk about this in front of all the anesthesiologists of the district. But when I took charge of uh, 
Dr. P. D. Medical College. And there were few departments which I thought were laggards. And unfortunately, one of them was at least the picture or the perception then was that anesthesia was one of those departments. Over the period of time, we have uh, done our best along with the department to see how to improve the working of the department. And I am happy to say that during the last two years, there has been a sea change in the department. It goes to all the faculty members of anesthesia department and that they have been regularly organizing such academic activities again goes to prove that things are changing and things are changing for the better. Am I as an administrator satisfied, fully satisfied? I don't think so. Because there is always a scope for uh, improvement. And that is why I said uh, a topic not to be discussed among before all the anesthesiologists, but because I got a chance to speak before all the faculty members, I thought it would be an appropriate time to um, at least speak out my opinion about the department. So I hope uh, organizing such activities, and I am very much appreciative of the fact that Naresh has done such human work in anesthesiology from a center like Amravati that we could do such pioneer work is in itself very credible. I only hope that uh, it gets recorded. We do a lot of work but many times it doesn't get the due recognition because it is not published. Whatever work you are doing at least make it a habit that it is publicized and published so that whether it's beneficial or to what extent it is beneficial, let the peers decide. But at least people are in the know of things that such a work is going on somewhere. And probably they may take a lead from this. Naresh, I am told, is doing this for a long, long period of time. It's not only beneficial to the anesthesiologists, the institute, but also beneficial to the patients. And I hope taking a cue from this, this study will be published shortly so that a lot many more people would know about it. Without taking much of your time, again I welcome you all and hope you have a wonderful academic feast over the over this Sunday. And Last but not the least, I would like to thank the organizers, especially the Department of Anesthesiology, for having given me this opportunity to interact with you. Thank you very much. We shall now start with our live workshop for today shortly.
for this workshop. Without wasting much time, I'll start with my presentation. We have already laid it. So I'll complete uh, this in a short time. And we will have a question and answer session during this final discussion time. So, today's topic is spinal anesthesia can be different, which actually includes the main core topic of segment spinal and then little bit about this uh, hypobaric, isobaric and continuous spinal anesthesia. So at present I will be talking mainly about segment spinal and in the afternoon session we will talk about hypobaric and continuous spinal anesthesia. So begin with something about the history. In 1909, Thomas Janisco proposed the general spinal anesthesia for surgeries over technique and thorax. It was in 2006, the new era began, when A van Brunner gave spinal at T10 for lap polycystectomy in a patient with severe COPD. But actually, there was a lot of criticism when I started first presenting this topic in 2011. And after that, there was a lot of criticism about this. So you should not give spinal at this level and so on. But the pandemic actually proved beneficial for this. Uh, and many people started doing this. And I have recently done one live workshop at Nausari in, during last three months. And this is my 27th presentation on this same topic within these two years. So this has become now our most trending regional anesthesia technique. Now what is segment spinal? The term is often used synonymously with thoracic spinal. But even the low doses of drug used at high number levels can produce a segmental effect. So the ideal definition should be locking of the required dermatomes, essential for the proposed surgical procedure with a very very low volume of local anesthetic drugs by giving spinal near the targeted nerve roots. And this often necessitates pleural puncture at the high number of thoracic levels. And the lower the volume of the dose of the drug you use, more likely to produce a true segmental block. Otherwise, if you use a larger volume, it will be your regular spinal. There are some factors which make segment spinal easy. In thoracic segments, the spinal cord is positioned anteriorly, leaving a significant space between the posterior and the spinal cord. The thoracic nerve roots are very slight and thin, covering its sufficient pocket. There is actually less anesthetic dilution for segmental inward distance from the site of injection and the nerve roots are very easily blocked at the site. Amount of CSF at thoracic levels is also comparatively less. And there is no difference in the onset time for isobaric and hyperbaric drugs at thoracic levels. While you may find that isobaric drugs, they take a little time to onset at lumbar levels. And there is natural thoracic kyphosis, T765. There are some safety concerns whenever we talk about segment of spinal. The first and foremost is neurological injury. The second is ventilatory impairment. The third is bradycardia and hypotension. And last but not the least is medical legal issues, as it is still to appear in the standard textbooks. Coming to the first major concern, that is damage to the spinal cord. This is the midline MRI of the spinal column. Here you can see, the, in the thoracic segments, the spinal cord is positioned anteriorly. There is a significant space, which you can make out in the next slide. Here you can see, there is sufficient space to accommodate your spinal needle at that level. This is position of spinal cord at various levels, thoracic, thoracolumbar and cord angular level. Imbaloni and Guvia did a study on the low incidence of neurological complications after thoracic, thoracic epidurals and they actually measured the exact distance as various levels T2, T5 and T10 and they found the distance to be around 5.19 mm at T2, 7.75 mm at T5 and 5.88 mm at T10 level. Then Lee R.A. did a study on anatomy of the spinal canal in various positions, sitting, lateral and supine positions. And they found the distance to be more in all positions at mid thoracic levels, especially the lateral and sitting positions. These are the positions we usually acquire for giving spinal anesthesia. Here when the spine is flexed at the thoracic level, you can see the spinal cord sits ventral in the apex of the thoracic curve. 
the left hand side figure shows the distance between anterior dura and the spinal cord and the right hand side figure shows the distance between the posterior dura and the spinal cord. You can make out there is a large uh, distance between the posterior dura and the spinal cord at the first This is when you give spinal atmic thoracic levels, there is, you need an angulation of around 40 to 45 degrees. And because of the angulation required, the distance between the posterior dura and the spinal cord is further increased. You can see here, the distance is almost 8 millimeters at E7, E8 levels, which is around 4.5 millimeters at E12, 11 levels. There are some additional points which favor safety of segment spine. The uh, incidence of neurological injuries after accident with neuropuncture during thoracic epidural is found to be very less. Uh, many anesthesiologists unknowingly use high number of thoracic spaces, especially in obese and parturients. In one study, only 29% were found to be correctly identified in the uh, required interocular space. What this means is you are already giving this thoracic spinal in many cases. Many times uh, the interpretation line which corresponds to L4, L5, it corresponds to L1, L2 or even higher. It has been shown in the study that only 29% were correctly identified in the space. So, it is in advertently used by many anesthesiologists day in and day out. The level at which spinal cord terminates is also very good. It can be as high as the L11 as well. So, to accurately identify the correct middle space, so identified only by 29-41% cases, but this is higher than I think. Interpersonal line also is variable. So the final solution is ultrasound. You can only correctly identify the space using the ultrasound. The second issue was ventilatory impairment. Here the main inspiratory muscle of respiration is diaphragm, which is usually unaffected. Expiration at rest is a passive process. The forceful expiration and tucking may get affected due to paralysis of anterior abdominal of all muscles. But the low doses of drug used, it produces mainly a sensory block with minimal motor weakness of abdominal muscles. And third issue was bradycardia hypertension. The heart rate may decrease if the block extends T1, T4 blocking cardiac center fibers. But due to the lumbar cycle sparing, the preload is maintained and the negative the membrane reflex is not initiated and that usually maintains the heart rate. And less hypotension is due to less sympathetic blockage, less venous to the lower limbs. About the medical legal issues and indications, now there is enough evidence to prove its utility in the cases where it is most indicated. Most cases of litigation are against uh, regional anesthesia, but still the thoracic epidural is performed day in and day out. I don't know how it is explainable when there is accidental pleural puncture during thoracic or number epidurals. So the proper explanation and consent is must. And it has started to appear in some standard tech groups. There is little mention in Hadzik and even Miller's about this thoracic spinal in the recent editions, but the details are yet to be confirmed. About the feasibility of segmental spinal languability, technically it is not much difficult. Those who are practicing uh, spinal anesthesia for years together, they can easily do it. Economic, it is very, very economic. It is almost a ratio of 1 is to 10, 1 is to 15 compared to GA. And legal visibility is still a question mark, but can be dependent with strong indications. If there are strong indications, you can always prevent this technique. Operational visibility. And experienced clinicians can very well do it. It is a very good learning curve. And can be used practically for all intraterminal surgery, like upper, lower, open, lap, major, minor, breast, and even superficial thoracic surgeries, plus some awake thoracoscopic surgeries like lectomy, hematomy, lung volume reductions, wage resections, and even some prone and lateral position surgeries. It has some advantages over routine spinal or at times over general anesthesia. Surgeries thought to be upper domain of spinal anesthesia are possible under second spinal, like upper abdominal thoracic and breast surgeries. Higher levels of the can be achieved with just half the dose that is used at number levels. There is minimal even anal infatuations, early recovery and walking. It has special advantages for general anesthesia in patients with respiratory comorbidities. 
can avoid post of pulmonary complications and ventilatory support. And also there is low incidence of fever in there. There are three different modes of using second to spinal. Either it can be a single short spinal for short to duration surgeries up to 120 minutes, or it can be combined with epidurals, either for long duration surgeries or as a backup in a very morbid cases. When you want to use a very low dose intrathecally or secondary spinal, in those cases, the epidural can act not only as a backup, by, uh, but by epidural volume extension technique, you can spread the same dose of uh, intrathecal drug to wider segments. And the epidural also can be helpful for post of analgesia. And the third option is continuous secondary spinal anesthesia. In case you have accidental neuro puncture, you can use this technique. Or you can use this technique primarily in very morbid cases. Isobaric and hyperbaric, either of the drugs can be used, or even a combination of these two drugs can be used with good effect. In general, isobaric drugs are preferred for laparoscopic thoracoscopies, breast and superficial abdominal surgeries, or in very morbid frail patients where relaxation is not an issue, you can always use these isobaric drugs. Hyperbaric drugs in many muscular patients where relaxation is more difficult to relax, you can use the hyperbaric drugs. Advantages of isobaric drugs? Less sensitive to collision issues. In low doses, there are propensity to block sensory nerves in preference to motor ones. It is uh, known as selective anesthesia. Onset is gradual, even an stability, even in high levels of block. Motor block time is shorter, leading to early ambulation and avoiding. Spinal can be given directly in the operative position, like in some lateral position surgery. Or patient can turn on his own after giving spinal uh, with isobaric drugs. You need not have to wait for some time to drug to settle, mm -hmm. like in some prone position surgery. And spinal can be given before epidural and at a space higher than epidural. If you use a hyperbaric drug, you have to do a epidural first and then use spinal to avoid the unilateral effects or uh, to avoid the saddle block. In isobaric drugs, you can do reverse. You can use spinal first and then use epidural without worrying for this unilateral effect. There are some disadvantages. Levels of block cannot be modified by the engineering conditions. Like in epidural, cycle sparing is common. It takes some on, uh, time for onset at number levels, isobaric drug. There is slightly more, less muscle relaxation, so you may need some higher doses many muscular patients. They are sensitive to temperature variations. At times can have unpredictable results when there are wide variations in temperatures. Amongst the available drug options, isobaric drugs, chlorofluorocaine 1%, which is not available nowadays, it was a very good drug. Hyperbaric drugs like Rupiogen 0.5% and now Rupiogen 0.75%. Those all these can be used. Chlorofluorocaine 1% as already said is not uh, available now. It was a very good drug for short duration surgery of 14 to 16 minutes. Uopiogen and Rupiogen, Uopiogen 0.5 and Rupiogen 0.75% are comparable. But Rupiogen being less lipid soluble is nearly half as potent as the Uvipiogen intrathecally and there is stronger differentiation between sensory and motor blocks with the Uvipiogen. Addition of small doses of additives like pertinent, dexmetamine or clonidine can intensify the sensory blocks. Dexmetatomidine has a special advantage in uh, it provides a longer duration in a dose dependent manner. And ketamine though potentiates the sensory block is known to shorten the motor block time. Rupiogen heavy 0.5% or Rupiogen heavy 0.75% can be used in the same dose range. Uh, thoracic segmental anesthesia can be produced with just half the dose that is used at number levels. But gravity dependent spread has to be kept in mind when using hyperbaric drugs. Can be a better choice for main hospital patients. Now this is important. How to decide the dose and site of injection? For abdominal surgeries, depends on the type that is open on lap surgery, site of surgery, for the lower abdominal average duration of the surgery, and whether the patient has any comorbidities uh, along with it. And if the patient has some comorbidities, you may decide to use the epidural along with that. The 
dose of local anesthetic and site of injection along the near axis can be varied according to the situation of the patient. In general, one ml of the isovaric drug spreads two to three segments above and below the site of injection. If you remember this, you can calculate the doses required for each surgery according to the patient. What that means is 2 to 2.5 ml of the drug is sufficient to block segments from T2 to L5 S1 when spinal is given at T10. 10 thoracic space lying in the center of the surgical field to our upper abdominal surgery. With adequate dose, that is uh, 2 ml or more, space about T10 is highly required for abdominal surgery. Space between T10 and L1 and a dose of 2 to 2.5 ml. This is a general statement. You can do all intra-abdominal surgeries of average duration 90 to 120 minutes with this much dose, 2 ml for minutes. Five and four minutes. ASA 1-2 patients, you can always do these uh, short to mid duration surgeries under this much of dose. It works nicely for 90 to 120 minutes and the regression of effects from the lumbar factor root starts varying after 80 to 90 minutes, 70 to 80 minutes. And for surgeries which involve the pelvic manipulations and if you think that going beyond this time you can use a combination of hyperbaric and isobaric drugs or prolongation of effect at lumbosacral roots up to 2 hours. For breast and superficial thoracic surgery, spinal and mid thoracic levels, 3, 4, 5, 6, with 1.2 to 1.5 ml and some additive is preferred. With this much dose, it can provide duration up to 60 to 90 minutes or it will more if the estimate is used as additive. For prolonged procedures, better to combine with epidural or some blocks rather than increasing the uh, dose of uh, local anesthetic and the spinal to avoid the respiratory and cardiac adverse respiratory and cardiac events. These are the different levels which are required for different types of breast surgeries. Like for MRM you need levels from C5 to T7. For mastectomy with transverse intracerdermis flap you need levels right from C5 to L1. And for simple mastectomy it is just given to T7. The uh, epidural scoring scale for arm movements, which is usually used for uh, assessing the motor blocks during thoracic epidurals, can very well be used for uh, uh, assessing motor blocks in second spinal. There are four grades based on the number of blocks and movements. Hand grip is C8 T1, then uh, wrist flexion is C7 C8, and elbow flexion is Position of the patient for giving spinal, it hardly matters when you use the isobaric drugs. Can be given in any position. But plain liver weight in 0.5%, the specific gravity of 0 0.990 is slightly on the hyperbaric side. And if given in a sitting position and patient kept seated for some time, it can lead to high levels of blood. Temperature of the drug has inverse relation with paricity. Cooled at 24 degrees, it can become hyperbaric and warmed at 37 degrees, it can become slightly hyperbaric. So, wide variations in temperatures can have some impact of gravity on the spread of drugs. When you use a combination of hyperbaric and isobaric drugs, sitting position is mandatory for the spinal to allow the hyperbaric drug to settle down to slightly. Type of spinal needle, either pinky or pencil point can be used. Combined with epidurals, CAC kit is the easiest and safest option. Uh, with pencil point needles, you have to enter a little bit more inside the um, space okay, because the hole is around 2 millimeters uh, below the tip. So the chances of paresthesia are more with this pencil point needles. Uh, it is always better to use this pinky needles or classic spinal. Landmarks can be identified either by surface landmarking or by using a ultrasound. Those who have the facility of ultrasound, they can utilize this. Or by surface landmarks, C7 has a prominent uh, spinous process. Then root of the spine of the scapula corresponds to T3. Inferior angle of the scapula corresponds to T7. And then the lower rib margin is around 10 centimeters away from the midline of the Apart from the interpistal line, which we always use as a landmark. By ultrasound, you can always count upwards from N5S1 in a parasitical oblique view, or you can count the 12th rib and go upwards, or you count the first rib and go downwards to locate the landmark quite space. 
There are some anatomical hurdles for thoracic spinal. The spinous process sharply angled and point bottom is between T4 to T9. Beyond T10, they resemble those in the lumbar region. The interlaminal spaces in the thoracic spine are narrow and more challenging to use. So, pyramidal approach can be very handy in such cases. These are some tips to follow for using pyramidal approach at mid thoracic levels. Just one centimeter lighter to the inferior margin of the upper spinous process and to then go the palomedial with the angulation of around 40, 30 to 40 degrees to locate the interlaminal space. Ultrasound can be used, but it's not act as easy as it is at the lumbar level. It is a little bit difficult at the thoracic levels. There is a very small window in the parasitic locking view, and there is absolutely no window in the transverse view at the thoracic level. What ultrasound tells us is the location of interlaminal space, depth to interlaminal space, and where exactly the midline is. Many times patients have some type of scoliotic anomalies, and in scoliosis, the convex side is usually more open for giving spine. This you can find out with the use of ultrasound, especially in the obese patients. This is parachetal oblique view at mid-thoracic level to locate the LFD complex. Uh, LFD is ligament of and dorsal dura complex. Transverse interspinous view at mid-thoracic level. It's not very useful if you have to do a little oblique view to look at the electric complex, but paramedian subject oblique view is more useful rather than transfer into spinal spine. There are some safety measures for successful use of segment of spine. You need to have a thorough preoperative assessment of the patient as to the time, site of surgery, approximate duration of the surgery, what are the dermatologists involved in the proposal. You need to talk to the surgeon, what will be the, uh, I mean, average duration, will take, uh, how much extensive the surgery will be. Accordingly, you can choose your uh, space and drug for giving spinal. Like the ultrasound facility, big procedures, scan can be done, identification of the advance can be done, selection of proper drug and more of second spinal decision on the side. Then after giving spinal assessment of the levels which are achieved, monitoring and use of appropriate sedation. In the preoperative assessment, apart from the site of surgery, type of surgery, and the duration, whether short, mid duration, long duration surgery, you need to assess the comorbidities of the patient. Whether you want to use a single shot, segment of spinal, uh, if it is not possible to use a larger dose in segment of spinal, you can use it with epidurals. Or you can use the third option of continuous segment of spinal. This is the diagram to show the dermatology involved in the like I already told you, for MRN unit C5 T7. Now coming to my segment spinal profile, more than, I mean, it must be more than 3,000 down over the last 11, 10, 11 years. Initially for high-risk cases, but nearly um, now occupies my 50% of my segment profile. There have been very few partial failures, but continuity no missiles. I usually do complete plans, evaluation, when it's success, minimum and technical monitoring, no CTD premedications are used, I have to lateral position and 27 gauge needle, depending on the patient's parameters, those and the of injection. For intraoperative procedures, for short duration procedures, I used to use chlorophyll, but now since it's not available, I have fallen back to isomeric fluid, or propylene. For mid duration surgery, you can use any of the drug available, either isomeric or hyperbaric drugs, along with the additive. Like if you want a longer duration, you can always use Dexmed. Dexmed can provide you a very long duration, even more than 3 hours, if you use 10 micrograms along with 2 ml of the drug, any of the drug. You can have a duration in excess of 3 hours. This is, as I have already told you, for average female patient 2 ml plus Combined with the epidurals, you can keep the dose to the lowest possible in segment of spinal, around 1 to 1.5 mm. You can always extend the limits by epidurals. I usually combine this with uh, transverse attorneys, plain block, or a block, 
और एक प्रसाइन प्लेन ब्लॉक और पोस्ट ऑफ एनर्जी सी है और इंदापुर से पिक्सल के दिख तो कल हमसे चेयर में पोस्ट है और प्रेस सर्जरी ऐसा वाली ट्रक का भी और एक मिनट तो लगेगा जब हम बट पैक तो जब मैंने कहा था तो पंडे ने एज अ प्रिफर्ड ट्रेशन or direct spinal plane block or MRI. Otherwise, you give a half concentration or even lower than that. You need to give bilateral blocks. About the two drug technique for uh, surgeries like TLHPC and then colorectal surgeries, where you need to have tense and assured defects at the non sacral groups, you can utilize this technique. You need to give spinal inserting position around T time L1 with 0.5 to 1 ml of the hyperbaric drug initially. And then 1.52 ml of the isovaric drug in different syringes, one after the other. The patient usually turns supine immediately after spinal. No need to take the patient in this position for lateral position surgery. You can keep the patient in the same position. Sensory block tested by pain brick. You will set in three to four minutes. Some emergency practitioners can offer an in initial 10 minutes. But these are usually minimal and gradual. No respiratory embarrassment is usually seen even in high thoracic and subacute tumors. Initial partial involvement of the lumbosacral roots can be seen, depending on the site you have used and the dose you have used. Many times when I uh, receive a feedback that I give segmental spinal, the patient is not moving his legs. So that happens when you give a large dose at any level. So initially there can be some lumbosacral involvement, but usually recovers by the end of surgery by 60 to 70 minutes. It is usually recovers. So that is uh, dose and site dependent. No additional supplements are usually required in most cases for any two lap surgeries. In lap surgeries, otherwise also whenever you do invisional, you need some sedation depending on the patient and uh, pressures they use. Patients can be completely mobilized in 4 to 6 hours. To sum up, it's very useful technique with many advantages, minimal risk, with due precautions, no need to panic when the block level is found to be higher than desired. Lab surgery is mainly with sedation. When facilities are available, it also can be helpful for most of And the technique is reserved for experienced clinicians with good learning curve. Now, I will show you some videos. This is the first one to show how. I mean, similarities to your lumbar spinal at lower thoracic levels. This was a case of probably a medical hernia. I am using 27 gauge needle. Yes. There is actually not much of angulation at lower thoracic levels. It was probably T12 L1 level. Just 2 ml of the drug. This was a morbid obese patient for hysteroscopic uh, removal of a poly, 132 kg. So spinal was given in sitting position uh, and needed to have some lumbosacral involvement for this. So I gave spinal at T12 L1 in sitting position with just 1.5, 1.7 of the drug. And then this is her hysteroscopic removal of poly. He was after one hour in bed completely. And this is after three and a half hours. She was completely mobile. This was a recent case. Last month I did a review perforation with serum creatinine of 4.7. A lot of dehydration or it was done with a hyperbaric drug. Very bad DU perforation, three days old, old morbidation. Please ignore the additional sounds. This is MRM, which 
was done in uh, this college only. Uh, epidural was T45 and spinal was given on space below. They was being tested. You can see how comfortable the patient is in spite of such high levels of blood. She had no sensation at C8 levels. But her grip strength was good, indicating that only sensory block was there. This is MRI being done inside the This is when you have not used either epidural or any sort of block in MRM. You can ask the surgeon to give back one back to block at the end of surgery. Just infiltrate some LA 10, 12 ml between petrolis major and minor at the end of surgery and some 10, 12 ml between petrolis minor and serratus anterior. That will provide analgesia for almost 10 to 12 hours. This was a unique case done here only. This was a diaphragmatic hernia, traumatic diaphragmatic hernia in a young patient. You can see all of the left hand thorax was filled with intestines. This was done under combined spinal and epidural. Spinal was given at T89 and epidural was put at T78. Diaphragmatic mesh repair being done. Done some four five years back, and probably it was for the first time this type of surgery was done under regional anesthesia alone, and no general anesthesia at all. This is the same patient at the end of surgery. He is ready to shift himself. The next day, X-ray of the same patient. Complete expansion of the leg toe. This was uh, after the medical hernia. You see his respiration, how bad he is. The old morbid patient done under combined epidural and spinal. A big transfer incision. Complete recovery at the end. A very old case, three years not proper. This is the aposcopolis cystectomy in a patient with diabetes hypertension and IFT with ETC of the monitoring. And I am usually single handed for the videos of uh, proper detection. This is ETC of the same This was a huge ovarian cyst supposed to be malignant, it was compressing all the intraabdominal structures. It was a morbid old lady and she had supine hypotension like syndrome. Her inferior vena cava was compressed and she had PP of just 80-90 even in supine position. So she was done under two drug technique. I gave 0.5 ml of the hyperbaric drug initially and then 2 ml of the isobaric drug. At the same level, This cyst had to be ruptured. It was such a huge cyst even after its full length incision. It could not be removed in time. So it was ruptured. Her cystectomy, omentectomy, instectomy was done. You can see her parameters. This is again MRM in a patient who had recent chemotherapy. In this patient, the, it was done under combined epidural and spinal. Spinal was not possible with midline approach, so paramedian approach was used. Many times there is a complaint that the pottery um, gets spurts uh, uh, I mean, during uh, spinal anesthesia or any type of regional anesthesia, but you can adjust the currents, then it is usually not a problem. Or you can use the bipolar pottery. Specifically showing the pottery use in this case, there are no spurts. This is the same patient at the end of surgery. This was done in the polish only. This is TLH with two drug technique. Same patient at the end of surgery. This is complete pneumonia. This is a 
case of sea local cord, upper case would be showed near total of region in the post required region and post report feeding gastrostomy. Even just 1.5 mg as a drug at T89 levels is a uh, tracheostomy uh, also very done. This is PCNL. I don't have a picture of this. This was done under two or three. This is ruptured ectopy. Whole of the abdomen was paid with the blood. The patient is interviewed during surgery. There is quite a number of head copies for uh, this second spine. So just go quickly. This was the patient with uh, atlanta axial dislocation with the basilary imagination. This is the one symptom of surgery was done. It was done with the protecting and the explaining all the details. This, this patient received secondary spinal twice in a span of 8 days. It was a C erectile patient, colorectal anastomosis was done, and there was a day since after 8 days. So uh, he was having bilateral pneumonia. He operated again and under the response. C is parameters. This was ruptured liver abscess with a hemoglobin of just 4.9. This was done under the single shot. My account was 48,000. Young lady. This is how I usually monitor ATC of the patients with the WHS and the smile. The simple of the patient comes. Same patient simply. This will not be most times. This was due to this because diabetic look. The volume is of the small and a young patient about to get cat so, This was a corporation leading to obstruction. This was the patient who is watching his surgery and was with the police coming. He had a pain intubation and accidental extubation 50 days back. He was again posted for this case of the dual indication. He was convinced for second spinal, watching his surgery. These are two patients being interviewed, both at the end of surgery and at the end of surgery. These are my two publications. One is in International Journal of Anesthesia and one is in Indian Journal of Anesthesia. Thank you very much for the time. Everything was quite clear, and any queries we will discuss in during the.